myself. Hello, everybody. My name is Farrell Phelps. I'm the host of the new show, Let's Talk About It. It covers a wide variety of topics, things that affect us locally. We have celebrity guests, and just, you name it, it'll be on the show. So hopefully you'll join us in the very near future. Today's topic is about all the killings that's happening with the Michael Jordan shoes. People, we gotta wake up. This has to stop. We have so many of our youths that are killing themselves behind a pair of shoes, something you put on your feet. All right? we got to find some solutions. So what I did, I brought in a former athlete, Mr. Bubba McDowell. He used to play with the Houston Oilers, and he also played with the Carolina Panthers. I wanted to get an athlete's perspective on this thing. Also, I brought in a student from Iowa State University, Mr. Randy Lede, who is going to weigh in for his age demographic. I also have a mother of two, Miss Angela Batsil. She's going to be on the show, too, and we're just going to talk about it. That's what it's all about, and that's the name of the show. So let's talk about it. All right, I'll see you guys in just a moment on Let's Talk About It. Thanks so much. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About It. My guest today is Mr. Bubba McDowell, former football player with the Houston Oilers and Carolina Panthers. Also, Mr. Randy Lede, who is a student at Iowa State University. Our subject is surrounding Michael Jordan's shoes that so many of our African-American youths are killing themselves over. I want to get the perspective of a professional athlete like Mr. Bubba McDowell and also Randy, who is actually in that age demographic where these types of things are taking place. Uh, Bob, I want to ask a question to you first. <clears throat> Coming from the, uh, a background of being a professional athlete, do you feel a certain level of responsibility to the, to the young kids that are coming up behind you that have looked at you as a role model? Uh, I've, I've always said that, you know, if I, if I ever got a chance to um, go to the next level, uh, the highest level, because I never thought I would be there, mm -hmm. you know, if God gave me that opportunity, you know, that I would do my very best, you know, to give back. And, yes, I do have a responsibility. And it's my opinion, my opinion only, right. that uh, I feel that all athletes in professional, whether it's college, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever, even Pop Warner, I tell my kids and kids that I train today, you know, right. you're a role model for those younger kids coming behind you. Absolutely. If, you, if you're doing well, they're going to want to do well. If they see you doing well, they're going to want to do well. And it's not just well on the football field or basketball or sports, but it's in the classroom and it's in, uh, out in the community as well. So, yes, right. I do have a responsibility, and I would do my very best, uh, as long as God give me breath to breathe, uh, mm -hmm. to, to make sure that I'm doing it the right way. So, again, those that are looking up to me, they see what Bubba McDowell is doing or, right. or whoever is doing professionally, you know, that's, that, that's what I want to uh, model after. I think that's wonderful. And I think that more people, and more athletes especially, yes. should take up the same mantle that you've taken up. They and should. have that same attitude. But I've actually heard a lot of athletes say, don't look up to me as a role model. Yeah. You know, don't, don't. And, and I can, I, because I know a lot of professional athletes, I understand why they say that. Yeah. Um, but I think it takes a big person to step up to the plate and say, hey, I will be that role model. No, well, and I think a lot of them say that because of, you know, the responsibility that, mm -hmm. that is put on them. Well, right. it, yeah, you are. You go, You have a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. to do it right. To do it right. And, and I think majority of athletes that say that is, is, is nervous, scared, because they know they're going to do wrong mm -hmm. at some point. And we all do. Absolutely. Nobody's perfect. You know, God, you know, God is only one perfect man, and that's Jesus Christ God. Right. You know, we're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But when we make those mistakes, it can't be mistakes that's going to cost us something dearly. Right. You know, and, and if we know that going into whatever business or whatever uh, athletic sports arena that we're, that we're uh, professionally uh, capable or able to associate it with, you know, we, we should be able to minimize the mistakes that we made that will filter down to those younger generations. Right. Uh, and I, very well said. Very well said. And I have to say, I totally agree with what you just said, Bubba. 
that, that's very on point. Now, Randy, from your perspective, being a college student, and you're in the age demographic of uh, where all these things are happening uh, with our young kids, why do you think society is having to deal with this type of thing, where kids are actually killing themselves for a pair of shoes that they're going to wear at some point and throw away? Uh, you walk on them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it, uh, how, 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 I, I'm just not understanding the <coughs> value that's associated with murder to have something to walk on, such as tennis shoes. I don't care who the person's name is that's on them. Michael Jordan, it, whoever. Uh, but Jordans happen to be the, the ones that we're talking about today. Why do you think the youths are doing this today? Why is this happening? Uh, as far as killing people behind shoes, I have no idea. I've, I've never killed nobody behind those shoes. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let them lie behind those shoes. But I can see why people would want the shoes really bad because, you know, the attention that you get behind the shoes when you walk in the mall and, you know, they're exclusive. Everybody doesn't have them. Okay. So you get a lot of attention from a lot of people and then, you know, it raises your confidence level. It's like, okay, you know, I'm getting all this attention from the shoes. So, you know, I can see why everybody would want a pair. Okay. So so tell me this. Do, um, do you feel like the, the, um, the, the, the self-esteem of the of the young men, or um, you know, the, the self esteem is it affected because they don't have it, or do you think you should feel good about yourself whether you have a pair of Jordan shoes or not? Shouldn't your confidence level and who you are uh, be established prior to a pair getting a pair of Michael Jordan shoes? I'm sorry, I didn't <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that. Your self-esteem shouldn't be tied to a pair of shoes. No, so, sure. so why is why is your self-esteem tied to a pair of shoes? Um, if you in a mall and there's a guy with braids on, and you have you know a pair of Jordans that came out two years ago, it's probably gonna get way more attention than you would. So. Okay. So tell me this: Is it the attention that's being seeked? Is that why you want to have the shoes? Because you want attention? The attention, which causes you know you. Have confidence level to goes up. Okay. So are you saying then that the confidence level of a lot of our African American youths are at a minimal, but in order to get an upgrade, you get your pair of Jordan shoes, and then that makes you somebody? At the moment, yes. At the moment? At the moment. Okay. And, and you know what? I, I like the fact that you said at the moment, because so often when you see these types of crimes happening, they're only thinking in that <clears throat> moment. They're not <clears throat> thinking about the future. They're not thinking that, okay, if I commit this crime and kill this person, some mother is going to lose a son. And not only is that mother losing a son, but their parents are going to lose their son because that son is going to jail if they are caught committing that crime. So it, it, it's amazing to me how in our society we attach value yes. to things that are material. And I think it's important that we learn to instill value from inside ourselves because that's who you really are you're not aesthetically who you are who you are is the inside, inside. and perhaps and, and in trying to find a solution or trying to find answers to why these uh, crimes are being committed is it the self-esteem that we need to work on with our with our young african-american men to to help them feel good about themselves regardless to whether they got a pair of jordans or the latest polo shirt or, or, or whatever, what, what, how do we start working on, on that? Not just be a, talking about the, the problem, but what kind of <clears throat> solutions can we get from that? Well, I think <clears throat> the, the, the main point of focus of this to me is that we, to build self-esteem, mm -hmm. it has to start within the home. Okay. You know, and I don't know if it's because of you know, the younger generation or is having kids earlier and they haven't quite gotten to that parenting stage whatsoever but you know I don't know what it is but okay it all starts within that household if you don't start okay. within that household teaching your kids your son daughter or nephew or whoever you're mentoring I mean, mm -hmm. it could be a foster child you know, whoever you're mentoring teaching them that you know yeah don't play don't don't put so much on value I mean on, on, okay. on material things Right. You know, again, you, and you said it perfect. It, it starts within here. Mm -hmm. If you have it in here, 
knowing who you are, right. those those one hundred eighty five dollars shoes wouldn't mean nothing to me. Right. All right. Uh, or it would be equivalent to me going out and say, okay, um, you know, yeah, I want to win this game, but if right. I don't win this game, you know, it's not it's not the end of the season. We, we, we still have right. another game to go play. Mm -hmm. That's life after There's this life one. life after, this, after right. this game, after, the, uh, after I'm done with my career. You, you, mm -hmm. you can go to a career. After right. the end of my career, whenever, whenever it may happen, you know, it could be a blown out knee. That right. doesn't define me. The football mm -hmm. didn't define me. Exactly. Exactly. Very well said, brother. Uh, this has really turned out to be an, uh, uh, um, an amazing uh, opportunity to have great dialogue about a very um, serious topic. And I'm really enjoying the dialogue between Randy and Bubba. We're going to be right back in just a moment uh, for more of Let's Talk About It with my guests, Mr. Randy Lede and Bubba McDowell. Hello and welcome back to Let's Talk About It with my guest today, Mr. Bubba McDowell, former football player for the Houston Oilers and Carolina Panthers, and my wonderful guest here, number, guest number two, Mr. Randy Lede, a student at Iowa State University. Uh, our topic is the subject of all the crime that's being committed surrounding the Michael Jordan shoes. Bubba, I want to ask you a question. Do you feel like Michael Jordan has a responsibility with our African American children that are committing these crimes? Is there a responsibility? Should he come out and make a statement? Should he say something? Should he maybe bring the cost of his shoes down to make them more affordable so mm -hmm. that people aren't going crazy over them? Um, I know I'm giving you a loaded question. No, I, I got the loaded question. A, B, C, D, all the above. Oh, no, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Yeah, that was easy. All the above. I, as I continue to watch it, it's like, okay, uh, and Randy brought the point up to me uh, prior to the, the show's taping that, you know, if you brought them down to a lower cost where everybody could afford them, then they don't really mean nothing. It's like, you know, if you don't have the it shoe, then you ain't it, for lack of a better way of saying that. Um, but I think that we need to really, again, like I said before, go inside of ourselves. I wish, I wish that, uh, that Jordan could, I don't, uh, just, I know he has to see all the crime that happens behind the right, shoe. I agree. And a lot of times when I witness this, it makes me feel like the only thing, and I could be wrong, I don't know. But it makes me feel like the only thing you're concerned about is the bottom line dollar. Mm -hmm. The money that's <laughs> being made from these shoes yeah. and these products. But guess what? People are killing themselves uh, behind it. And I've asked the opinion of several different people. I'm like, do you think that Michael Jordan should have a responsibility any kind of way? And some people say yes. Some people say no. It's kind of like smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. It's a choice that you make. Yeah. Uh, but your choice shouldn't put you in a position where someone will kill you, even if you did want a pair of Michael Jordan shoes or whatever. Uh, Randy, from your perspective, uh, have you seen any type of uh, crime being committed that's close to you that you know about or that you've actually witnessed yourself with kids that you're familiar with? Oh, yes. Uh, I was actually in a situation when, uh, when the Space Jams came out. Uh -huh. we, uh, we didn't get a pair because they sold out to my pair like first hour and I came we was walking to the parking lot and one of my friends said was lucky enough to get a pair. Okay. And uh, as we walked to the parking lot, uh, a gentleman with dreads came and was like, hey, you know, I like y'all shoes, you know, give me the shoes. And uh, my friend was like, you know, it's not about to go yeah. down like that. Well, and it's, and it's, it's so senseless to me because what's happening is lives are being taken. Over what? A pair of shoes. A pair of shoes that you walk on. That you walk on. And I understand, Earl, that you know everybody wants these shoes. You know mm -hmm. Michael Jordan. I mean, heck, I want a pair. You mm -hmm. know, but I, I I don't want a pair bad enough to where I have to go take somebody's life or somebody take my life. You know, to get these pair of shoes. And right. you 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 said earlier about you know should he come out and you know, say something? Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? Right. I mean, it's not like he hasn't made enough money from past shoes. Absolutely. Know? You know, like Randy said, these shoes are from way back, you know, now they're reissuing them again. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, again, it, it comes down to, you know, responsibility of a person in authority. And Michael Jordan, right. you know, and it's my opinion, you know. Yes. And I'm going to speak my opinion. And that's what we want. You know, he <laughs> should come out and, and say something. 
I mean, I don't know what, you know, he has a populace, I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that will word it right, the right, right way for him to uh, project it out to the community. But um, I, I really believe and truly believe that if he comes out and say something that I think a lot of this killing would, would, would stop, you know, whatever it is he got to say, it just, he just, his face just has to be out there and telling people that this cannot happen. Absolutely. I totally agree. Uh, and just seeing that would make me feel like, okay, this guy cares about exactly. these kids, you know, because while his pocket is getting fat mm -hmm. off of this product, kids are dying. Kids are dying. Mothers yeah. are losing their sons, mm -hmm. you know? Brothers are losing their brothers. You're losing your sister. I mean, it, it, you're losing so much behind a pair of shoes. Um, and I, I think that if he just said something, then it would make a difference. It would make a big difference. And, and, and you can go as far as to say that what if it was my kid? Or more important, right? One of his kids, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a young or old. <clears throat> right. If it were one of his kids, you know, what 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 would he be thinking? At, you know, at, at that point, at that point, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if it's oh man, my kid, you know, oh yeah, it's Michael Jordan, that's my son, you know, and it happens, it right. happens, you know, for for whatever reason, it may happen. Okay, well, you Michael Jordan, you son, you can get another pair. Boom, life is gone. Mm. Behind a pair of shoes. Behind a pair of shoes. So then. Like we said before, to to help with the problem or to help alleviate the issue of our kids being killed, we as a society, I feel, and, and Randy, tell me what you think, uh, we need to find ways of building self-esteem with our kids so that they are not so easily influenced by people that they see in the limelight. Um, so from your perspective, uh, being raised by a wonderful mother, what values were instilled in you that keeps you from becoming what we see in the um, in the media? Well, my mama always <clears throat> taught me not to follow the trend. So if uh, everybody's getting a Jordan shoe, you know, there's going to be plenty more. I don't have to get that pair. I could create my own style, and I don't have to do everything that everybody else is doing. Right. So with that, you know, I'm not in line trying to buy Jordans because, you know, I have my own style. I'm right. Every, if I see a pair on TV, you know, I'm not quick to go buy it because uh, as they style, it's not mine. Right, right. And, and I, I like that. And I think that more of our, our children should adapt the attitude that Randy has because so often we, we want to follow somebody else, you know. But why follow somebody else when you have the power to set your own path, you know? Why be ordinary like everybody else when you have the opportunity to be extraordinary, you know, what stands out to me is not the, the, the young man that's wearing pants that's sagging down on his butt, which is something that we see a lot of. But what actually stands out to me now is when I see a, a young man who carries himself in a very neat manner, that's what gets the attention. I think anybody can walk around with your pants sagging. It's going to get attention. You know, people are going to look at you like, what's going on? But when you are your own self and you're not operating like the rest of the world, I think you stand out. And I think what happens with these Jordan shoes is everybody's trying to operate like the rest of the world. They want to be like the next Michael Jordan. They want to be the next whatever. And that's all fine and well, but guess what? Michael Jordan has made his money. Michael Jordan's place on earth, he's set. But for the youth coming up, you're killing yourself. You're not set. You're set to go to jail. You're set to have a doomed life, you know? So we have to really take into consideration what we're doing when we're doing it, and also know that we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility, not only to ourselves, but to those that are around us. You know, that's very, very important. So we're going to come right back in just a moment and talk a little bit more about the dilemma behind the Michael Jordan shoes. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It with my guest, Mr. Bubba McDowell, former football player for the Houston Oilers and Carolina Panther, Panthers. And my second guest, Mr. Randy Lede, who is a college student at Iowa State University. All right, guys, we're back with more on the subject of the Michael Jordan shoes. Now, Bubba, a minute ago, you mentioned um, self-esteem. The shoe. The, the <laughs> shoe. <laughs> the shoe. And um, so you feel like it's, it should start in the home. I do. With parenting. I do. Give me an example of that. As a parent yourself of two young men, how, uh, wh how is it that you're raising them uh, differently to make a difference so that they're not 
uh, they don't fall prey to this type of thing. What is it that you instill in, in your kids yourself? Well, I tell Trey and Miles all the time. Trey's uh, 15 now, and Miles will soon be 13 in a couple more days. You know, and I just tell them all the time, you know, you got to be yourself, you know, you know, because if, if, if you don't start by first being yourself, mm -hmm. it's so easy, you can, or as you said, I say, it's so easy, you're easily influenced by other people to go the wrong way, you know, mm -hmm. and, and because of the mentality of, and I just say, of the young generation today. Okay. Uh, man, I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it is crazy, you know, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, you know, like Randall was saying, you know, Everybody wants to be noticed, you know, in some capacity, right. you know, be it sports, you know, be it wearing the Michael Jordan shoes, whether it being, you know, the next Kobe, okay. you know, or the, or the next uh, Andre uh, Johnson. Okay. These kids wants to, want to be noticed, you know, and there's a way to get a, get to that status, but you, mm -hmm. you got to go through a process right. to get to that status, you know, being, uh, we say Andre Johnson being, you got to do what Andre Johnson did. To get that. To get that, to right. text and to, uh, from the University of Miami. That's practice. Same thing with Michael Jordan. You know? Right. You got to be able to go through that process for it. And, and, and from generation to generation, uh, it's, it's a process thing, you know. And, and, and I try to, as a parent, again, I'm not perfect, but, mm -hmm. you know, as a parent, what's important is that you can instill and talk to your kid, son or daughter, all day long. Right. But the most important thing that has to happen is, when you see them going off that r wrong track, right, you got to bring them back. Mm -hmm. You got to be, you got to be able to put them back on the right track. Say, hey, you know what? That's not you. You're not supposed to be following him, him or her doing the wrong thing. Right. Now, if him or her is doing the right thing and it's the right thing that is good, that is that is honorable, right, yeah, you do that. Mm -hmm. But again, you, you step back. You got to know when to step back as an individual, and it's hard as a as young generation because again. You know, they want to be known, want right. to be seen. That influence. Know, that influence, oh. you know, and the peer pressure is huge, more so, you know, in this generation as opposed to when you and I was coming up. Right. Things were much simpler. Now you don't have that because, again, you got the Michael Jordan, you got all the uh, amenities, you know, as, as, uh, as a young group, you know, mm -hmm. what life or we want to have, you know. Right. I, and, I, and I just go back and just think about what if we'd have had those back in the day, man. Yeah. You know. You know know, the, the Xbox, the PlayStation, <laughs> you know. The I distractions. Mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I just want to know sometimes how different it would have been back then as as, uh, as we were growing up to now in, in these kids' days, you know, with, with this generation. Right. You know, having everything, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what it comes down to, having everything at their disposal. Absolutely. So they, they can get to it, you know. And I, and I tell Trey and Miles, hey, you know, uh, a lot of times when they ask for stuff, you know, even though I have the ability to give it to them, right. whenever I want to give it to them, right. you're going to work for it. I think that's excellent. You're going to work for it. Show me that you're, you're capable of uh, earning this, deserving mm -hmm. this, before I go out and get it. Yeah. And, and that could be from, you know, Miles, who's always on the honor roll. You know, okay. If you want something, you know, hey. Get on the honor roll, you'll be all right. Stay on the honor roll. <laughs> you, know, you, 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 you want one of these Xbox games, you know, you better stay on the honor roll. All right. right. You want this next... Uh, uh, big wheel of uh, motocross, you better stay on that honor roll. Okay. So it's always pushing them to, to strive to do better, you know, and, and, and I do that through my, through, through schoolwork because, again, right. they're very smart, you know, and uh -huh. they're very uh, humble kids uh, right. as of now, as of now, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, when they get out of control, you know, you know, I, I, Daddy got to step in. Daddy got to step in. Daddy has to step right. in. And that's my duty and my responsibility to step in. Right. As a father. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell me this. Do you think um, a lot of the crimes that you see happening now with the kids, you think it, uh, uh, you think it's happening with a lot of the parents that were single single parents raising their kids? I do. I do. Or do you I, think it was from a, a families where uh, both the mom and dad were present and, uh, and, the, and the parents collectively raised this child a particular way? I, I, I think... I'm gonna go out on them and say I'm, I'm gonna say more of a single parent because that is what I'm hearing. That is more what I'm seeing today. Okay. You know, uh, young men do, uh, being raised by their mom don't right. have that male figure in their life. You know, and mom is mom. Right. But I, I still say at, at the end of the day, a male figure is uh, is huge in in a, in a family. Right. You know, because I mean, again, who mom can only teach you so much. Right. She can't teach you how to be a man. Right. You know. 
you know, I know people, you know, people may say <laughs> something differently, but right. I mean, at the end, I, I really do believe that, you know, she can't teach you as to be a makeup. They, that man can go out, take you out, show you what all the, the, the boy things to do, the manly things to do, mm -hmm. you know, which mom, you know, yeah, she's great. She has a great job, but it's still that male figure right. that is a big influence. The in male presence kids. needs to be. Need to be there. There. You know, it needs to be there. The male uh, figure needs and to I be I think there. that's the biggest problem with a lot of our generation today from single family home. Uh -huh. no, no male figure there. Right, right. I certainly agree with you that the male figure is present. Randy, I wanted to ask you from the um, perspective of a, of a young man, how have you stayed on course in your life to uh, having graduated high school now and pressing forward in your life. You're now a college student at Iowa State University. How have you managed to stay on track and on course to reach the goals that you want to reach in your life? I base most of my decisions off other people's decisions. I see the consequences that they have with the path they chose. So if I don't want to end up like that, I would choose a different path. Mm -hmm. Okay, very well said, very well said. And I think that's important. We have to look at what the consequences are. And so often we don't see the consequences. We think about the moment, and it's that moment, that one second of our lives that could change forever. forever. It can make the difference between life and death. So to have someone as sharp as Mr. Randy Lede here to say, I take a look at what I see other people doing, and I know I don't want to go down that same path. It helps me to make good, effective decisions in my life. I think that's very honorable. So Randy, thank you so much for your insightfulness. Hello and welcome back to Let's Talk About It. Uh, we're going to add an additional guest, Miss Angela Betzel, who is a mother, and I want her to weigh in on the situation surrounding the Michael Jordan shoes. All right, when we return in just a moment. <laughs> to this segment of Let's Talk About It with my special guest, Mr. Bubba McDowell, formerly of the Houston Oilers and Carolina Panthers, and my other guest, Miss Angela Betzel, who's the mother of two young men. We're having the topic discussion today surrounding the Michael Jordan shoes, and I wanted a mother to weigh in from her perspective uh, of what she thinks about what's happening surrounding these issues with the Michael Jordan shoes, all the crimes being committed, people being killed, places being robbed. I want to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, Angela. Having two young men yourself, how do you feel about all the young men that are committing these crimes that are with our African-American youth right now? Uh, I think it's a very sad situation, uh, and that not only with the shoes, but uh, with a lot of things. Uh, I think that their values are misconstrued. Um, in many cases, Absolutely. not only uh, single parents, but sometimes it even happens with uh, two-parent homes. Um, where the, the child just goes astray. And uh, I noticed that the, the young, one of the young men has, has been charged with capital murder, lived in our neighborhood. And so I know his parents, and uh, it's just pretty devastating. Like wow. you had mentioned previously, not only is it the child that has been killed, there also this young man is probably looking at a life sentence. Okay. So, you know, that's hard on his parents. So it's just a lose-lose situation. It is. And uh, it just saddens me to see so many young men uh, go down that path. Right, right. We talked about prevention of these types of crimes and things happening. What are some of the things, I want to ask you from your perspective as a mother, what are some of the things that you feel like can be done uh, in the rearing of our children that could make a difference uh, where this type of thing is concerned, so that they won't go out and commit crimes like this behind tennis shoes. And, I, and it's so senseless. Exactly. Um, just like you were saying, um, next year, or even in probably six months, if the, all the whole craze will be over, and the shoes, you know, at that point are basically worthless, they're waiting on the next something to come up before they, uh, you know, buy that. They have to have whatever system comes out, whether it's, you know, the 360, we, whatever, you know, it's always um, the just, to have, just to be the first. Mm -hmm. um, iPhones, iPads, it's all, you know, connected as far as um, 
wanting to be the first or the only exclusive people that have whatever the item is. And um, lost my train of thought. And I guess that's one of the things that uh, that makes them feel special. I guess if they can have it before anybody else gets it, and they're the first, is mm -hmm. you know, is, is that what gives you? Uh, what, what would you call? Them, what you uh, give them that that identity, you know? Okay. You know, I'm I'm the man or, or female, you know, the woman that you know, right. that got like you know the guy first, you know, and right. who don't wants to be first in getting things, you know? Okay. You know, okay. I, I'm especially in this generation exactly. when, it, when it's, right. it, with to them it's just so important to be first. Mm -hmm. And just as Randy had you know previously mentioned, it is sometimes an esteem issue or a confidence, uh, but you know it's. It's just sad that that's the way that they're trying to build their confidence or esteem. And I also agree with Randy when he was saying, you know, don't necessarily follow the trend. Maybe you can start the trend. Absolutely. And uh, <coughs> fortunately, in my, my situation, uh, both of my sons have always deterred from those things because of the fact that it uh, just brings on. I know uh, at one time, uh, my oldest had had his tennis shoes stolen out of the uh, locker room and it's been my practice since they were pretty young that they they basically bought their own shoes I gave them fifty dollars <laughs> because I figured that's how much shoes could cost right. so anything over that and above that they worked to get that money to buy whatever yeah, shoes right. and so then it was you know really hurt him because he had bought those shoes Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, yeah, that, and you that was right. the, the thing that kind of turned it around where he didn't want to be, um, you know, to have the newest or the fad, whatever was in, you know, when it was a case of it's possibly going to get stolen. Right. So there again, you know, we just need to uh, instill in our youth, all of our youth, uh, female as well as male, right. uh, the importance of working for what they want. And just like you had previously mentioned, mm -hmm. I think that this generation uh, feels a, such a sense of entitlement. Yes, that, uh, very well uh, said. Yeah, they just, very well said. Right, they just suppose, you're, as a parent, you're just supposed to do this. And that's another thing that I um, value, that I've always taught my sons that, um, you know, it was up to them. If they want to be respected, then they should respect others. Right. Mm -hmm. And there again, our youth in general just do not have that respect for themselves. But, and, you know, just like you were saying before, uh, how can they respect anybody else if they don't uh, respect they don't themselves. Have, have any respect right. for themselves? Right. And it just really hurts my heart to that they, you know, that they don't have any respect for life. Right. You know, it's, it's one thing, the tennis shoes, whatever, but, uh, you know, they just, it doesn't mean much to them. Right. And, and that's, I, and I think that's a, a sad state of affairs. <laughs> I'm sorry, and a lot of that, I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, just their mentality of thinking, you know. Right. They see so many different things and and not being governed by adults or somebody in authority, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it's just like anything. You, you continue to let it happen, let it happen, let it happen, let it happen. It becomes a habit now. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and that's the, that's where, that's the road a lot of our young generation, new generation, however you want to classify it, you know, it, it's going down right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it, everything they're doing is becoming a habit and, and, and not for the good. And not for right. the good, unfortunately. Right. Now, we got good things that are happening with, with, with some young young females, young men. Yes, we mm -hmm. do. But for the major, majority, you know, this generation is, is going down a road where, you know, it's, it's about me, me only. Right. You know, Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Selfishness. Yes. You, know, Definitely. You, know, you know, again, we talked about can I have it first? I want to be the first one right. to have it, you know. And, you know, and, 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 and it's sad. It's, it, sad it, that, it's really sad. That we've gone to that nature of, of life, you know, with, with our young generation. But right. that's where, again, we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. we as parents has to come in just like she's done a great job with her two young men. Right. You know, you know, I'm still working with Trey and Miles and at a young age we're, we're really right now where they and that peer pressure. Absolutely. Uh, that age bracket you in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 15 and 13. So you know, yeah. And it's so working. And it's working. And I think that that's what a lot of parents don't want, you know, being maybe because they're younger, you know. Right. Don't want to put in that effort, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, teach. Right. You know, to nurture. Mm -hmm. You know, let them know what's going on. Let them know this is not good. Let them know, you know. Right. You can do better. You know, you just got to do that. And, and that is a constant job as a parent. It's right. a constant job as me as being a football player. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, as a football player and as a football coach, because when, when those parents, 
instilled to them when they let those kids come through our university. Right. We're not only just coaches out there, but we're parents as well. Exactly. You know, we got to teach these young men, you know, about football, mm -hmm. but more importantly, what has to take place in that classroom, which is going to carry you far, far, far more farther than yeah. you know than when, when your career is done. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I, a lot of times too, if if, if and, and you being in the position that you're in, uh, being a coach in Roma, it's hard if the parents haven't done their job. Right. When they get to you, it makes your job <laughs> that much more difficult. Yeah, that's right. It right. does. And I think a lot of times with with uh, with our with our youth. With our youth, we haven't instilled enough fear in them. Like there are certain things as a young man that I was scared to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because I knew that if I did A, B, C, or D, my mama or my daddy gonna beat my butt. So that kind of fear kept me safe from a lot of things that I potentially could have done. Mm -hmm. And and I I really thank God for that fear, man. Because if I didn't have that, ain't no telling what I'd be doing. Kind of if we go, if we gonna keep it real, you know what I'm saying. You gotta keep it real, and that's the kind of fear I have to do with Trey and Miles sometimes. Yeah. Miles being more of a, you know, his, his attitude is really more of a uh, real, real, real grunty, you know, okay. aggressive. So you know, okay. for him, I definitely gotta stay on him. You know? Okay, so I kind okay. of threatened him a little bit. All right, <laughs> total right. opposite. Okay, okay. So Miles is more like his daddy. No, more no. like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm just messing with Bubba, y'all. Yeah. Forgive me. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this up for, uh, in just a moment. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll be back in just a second. Thanks again. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Let's Talk About It with my special guest today, Mr. Bubba McDowell, formerly of the Houston Orders and Carolina Panthers, and Miss Angela Batstill, mother of two. Angela, Bubba, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Thanks so much for being here. We're talking about all the crime that's happening surrounding the Michael Jordan shoes and what's happening with our African-American youth today. Uh, Angela has two young men that she has uh, been a blessed mother to raise, um, and so she's going to weigh in a little bit about what she thinks about that and the parents' uh, responsibility in it. Uh, Angela? Okay, um, a couple of things, Farrell. Uh, I noticed that you, the coach had uh, previously mentioned that a lot of the youth that are troubled come from single homes. And I, I definitely agree. I think there's also another element of uh, the parents just being extremely young themselves. And so many times their parents have that same mentality of uh, what's valuable and what's not. I had recently attended uh, a couple of baby showers of uh, young ladies, probably 20, 22, and I was just appalled at the things that were given at nothing that could be used like a tub or bottles. It was all designer clothes, designer tennis shoes. Wow. And, um, you know, but that just makes a statement in itself. Absolutely. And also the fact that a lot of times uh, instead of, you know, in our day, uh, teenage pregnancy was uh, shunned about or whatever, but it's almost like taken on a whole nother thing where now, you know, they it's glorified, yeah. you know. Um, so um, it's just, you know, like I said, and that was one thing I did want to bring out, that it's not only the young men that are, um, you know, going through some things, but the young ladies also, as far as uh, wanting to keep up with, you know. The latest trend. and Exactly, exactly. Who has this, and, who has that. And going to um, <coughs> measures that would not uh, line up with the kind of things that they should be involved with. Wow. So, yeah. So in saying what you what you said, it, it seems to me that we're raising kids in an environment where, as the adult, we're making things these things a priority, exactly. the external things a priority. Exactly. So if we have a name brand this or a name brand that, then that means I am this or I am that. Exactly. So when you have a child that you're bringing up, and this is what you, this is their example, they can't help but to follow exactly. the same example that the parents follow. Talk about that habit. Right. It's, it's a habit that's being created. Uh, exactly, exactly. And unfortunately, it affects generations and generations and generations. Right, and if you look at the generation we're in today, again, you know, it, it's, it's, getting, it's getting worse, you know, because of the, the identity that these young kids, you know, must have. You know, exactly. for, for whatever reason, they must have an identity, you know, I, I mean, uh, set aside from everybody else. You know, I can't be, you know, I can't be with you, you know, because you, you got on uh, Walmart. Right. I got on um, uh, uh, Tommy Hilfiger, you know, yes. or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. mm -mm, that's that's not happening. But again, right. that's because of 
what they've learned, what they've seen, and uh, what they've already put in their minds, you know, you know this, this can't happen. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're not in my class or group. Right, right. So there's a, a, a level of separation. A level of separation. Mm -hmm. Well put, yeah. So you're separated by aesthetically what you have. You're not uh, separated by what you have inside exactly. of yourself or your, your intelligence or your sharpness exactly. or your ability to set goals and achieve them. You're, you're separated by what you externally wear, be it Michael Jordan shoes, be it whatever that is, mm -hmm. Tommy, if you're whatever. We have such a, a misguided segment of society and, and our youth. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that today's show will help to make a difference when someone sees it in the lives of other people as they come up and, and see these things and kind of wake up. Hopefully, hopefully we, can, we can get a wake up, a wake up call um, and a call of realization like this thing has got to stop. Right. You know, and we need some people to step up to the plate. Oh, definitely. You know, we can't definitely. sit back and be quiet about it and expect solutions to just happen. Exactly. You know, we have to take an active role which is what you guys have done today by showing up for this particular segment of the show. So I just want to once again thank you for your uh, your time, your efforts. Thank you. Man. And Angela, I would like to thank you for your time and efforts. Well, thank you, you guys have done a, absolutely, and I'm certainly I'm going to call you back Let's for another it. show. This is not over. Please do. <laughs> Say something, Michael. Say something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Speak. This is your product, and you do have a partial responsibility in the African American youth and the things that they are doing in today's society. Thanks so much for joining me this time on Let's Talk About It. I look forward to seeing you guys soon on my next show. Be blessed.